friends uh, i welcome you to the next presentation on nurturing smart teachers i am very happy to be here with uh, mr amarjeet divan uh, who has been for more than 60 years of experience with regard to the banking operations the banking industry he will talk about uh, banking law and he is now a practicing advocate also after his uh, actual service uh, with punjab and sind bank and also in a training institution welcome divan ji my first question is tell us something about evolution of modern banking and banking laws which are the these laws that regulate banking so if we if we talk about modern banking uh, modern bank in india is around uh, more than 300 year old the first bank was set up in uh, 1770 it was hindustan bank then subsequently by the east indian company they set up three banks bank of bengal bank of madras and bank of bombay which was subsequently merged and uh, one bank came in bill bank of india and after uh, independence it was nationalized and now the state bank of india is the largest bank of uh, indian public sector so if we talk about uh, uh, as, as as of now there are public sector banks there are private sector banks and there are corporate banks uh, these banks all these banks are regulated by reserve bank of india uh, so far the laws are concerned uh, as such there is no banking land practice all the if we talk about banking the laws totally dependent on the indian contract act a law torts or other commercial uh, or civil laws which are applicable to other uh, activities also so similarly they are activity banking uh, banking transaction and banking uh, dealings also okay and uh, these laws means the act rules regulations circulars what is their objective what is their purpose you see the you see banking is the backbone of any economy according uh, including india but uh, they have to function within certain uh, framework uh, if you look into the ob overall objective of uh, banking law which is a uh, regulator the regulator law their banking regulation act 1949 and reserve bank of india act 1934 whereby the reserve bank of india is getting powers to regulate the banks the objective of regulating the bank is to provide financial stability to the banks so that they can play an important role in the growth of economy without regulation banking can go anywhere so as of today no company no entity can open a bank only after getting a license from the reserve bank of india so if to, up, up to rbi to give license then all there are so many prohibitions also uh, in india banks cannot do any trading they can't do any business uh, only what they can do is they acquire certain securities then they can enforce their security and trade them otherwise they are not allowed similarly they are not allowed to hold immovable property in their name uh, beyond 7 years and even uh, the property which are uh, there in uh, for their own use they can hold so they are regulated the objective is that to provide a financial stability to the system and to ensure growth at the same time the keeping the inflation at the uh, minimum level within the acceptable level of 3 to 4% okay uh, you sp spoke about the reserve bank and you spoke about the regulations now are there any other laws which are important for day to day functioning of uh, the banks and how these laws can be taught uh, because whether these are regulations act rules they all come under the laws how can these regulations be taught to the students no see apart from uh, uh, what i i said in the earlier that there is no exactly there is no law which we can call the banking law uh if you look into the law in india uh, even the our, our total banking laws are influenced by the english law because we were earlier ruled by the british people so in even in uh, england also uh, there were no banking laws as such but uh, over a period of time time uh, when the, there are number of decisions by the various courts especially by uh, one lord mr mansfield so they were looking into the what are the practices in the trade and commerce so those practices were used as a law and they became law so initially in england uh, first law was on the banking was bill of exchange act and in india when in, uh, they were ruled by british they uh, enacted the negotiable instrument act in uh, 
so that law is very important for uh, banking because it is dealing with the your bill of change dealing with the promissory note and dealing with the checks you know very well that uh, uh, checks are uh, daily in use in the banking sector so under that law one must understand that uh, there are certain uh, special uh, rights which is given to the banks they are getting protection for paying the bank, uh, checks and they are getting protection for collecting checks for customers so that was very important uh, any student who want to learn banking learn practice you must uh, thoroughly uh, know about the negotiation management act then there are various other acts also like your partnership acts uh, your companies act uh, then your uh, uh, llp act uh, then consumer protection act because uh, under the consumer protection act 1986 the banks are also covered under the consumer protection act then the prevention of money laundering act 2002 that is also important piece of legislation for bank because all the transaction are normally expected to be through the banking channel as such uh, we must know because uh, money laundering has been a big uh, problem for the uh, entire world because the money is being used for terrorism extra so we must know the uh, prevention money laundering act and of to go of course indian limitation act 1963 and your indian stamp act because uh, they are uh, important from point of view of handling the bill of exchange or promissory note and when the banks are giving any advances to any party then they are getting their some security documents signed and one of the important security document promissory note so student need to understand those laws beside that another very important law is the foreign exchange management act 1999 because uh, uh, you see if we talk about total commerce then there are uh, exports and imports also and there are remittances outside and remittances inside india and those uh, all these remittances are through the banking channels only and similarly all payments against import and export there are handled through the banking channels so uh, student uh, of law must learn about the foreign exchange management act also and, and of course uh, as of now because when the banks were transformed from the manual system to the your system internet banking mobile banking etc so the number of cyber frauds are now happening so the role of uh, your uh, information technology act 2000 has also become important so for the student it is uh, desirable they are aware of this law and especially we talk about there are certain laws which are specially framed for the bankers to protect the rights of bankers uh, because uh, when financial reform started in the indian banking industry rather than the total financial sector uh, the first thing was that a large number of bad debts uh, were there in the banking sector and there were no laws which were uh, in favor of the banks so initially uh, when the drt was set up because the courts were overloaded Uh, with so many cases so they were not able to decide the cases in favor of bank and expedition manner so the first thing was the uh, recovery of banks uh, and financial institution dues were brought in the statute book in 1993 <clears throat> and subsequently when this act was also found not uh, of much help then there came the um, normally we called by in the short term surface act and that act was brought but even um, when it was found the efficacy of these acts was not up to the mark there was things have slowed down because people are using loophole in the system then the government of india in 2016 came up with another law in solomon's bankruptcy code if today a, any inspiring uh, person and a law student he want to become a, a practitioner or as a as a in house uh, counsel he must know these laws especially the insolvent bankruptcy code is a, a evolving law and uh, there are a lot of opportunity under the act act sir uh, we often talk uh, that financial sector reforms uh, they have which are essential but they have put a lot of pressure on the banks now is there some measures some rules uh, that were introduced to help the banks because of these financial sector reforms you see sir i, I had just told you that uh, initially the rdd fi act was part in 1993 where why the cases of tel lek and above were to be handled by the drt now um, subsequently the law was amended and the amount was raised to 20 lakh rupees we say was 10 lakh rupees and then uh, they became the securitization and uh, reconstruction financial set and enforcement security act which we call surface check 2002 under that act banks were given powers that without going to court they can enforce their securities they have to uh, 
they can give a 60 day notice and then then they can subsequently if the party don't come around to serve the debt then they can and take possession of securities and sell them in auction or even by way of private treaty so banks uh, were uh, given more powers you see that in under that law the authorized officer appointed by bank he is enjoying the power of execution court but the only thing is whosoever is uh, using those powers he is uh, he is expected that he will follow the law in totality at each step otherwise what, what will happen if he misses to apply the law to comply with the law then all the actions taken by the bank can be declared null and by by an competent court so there are laws and today the i, I already said in solvent bank security code although although this is a resolution tool this is not a recovery tool but uh, you see we don't want pin to penalize the borrowers who are victim of circumstances when we talk about our borrower who have defaulted when we have to look into whether default is due, due to his will is a willful defaulter or the default is due to circumstances beyond his control if it is beyond his control then there is need to help him out so that he come out of the situation he is uh, his unit his working is revived and he is in a position to service the debt so that is a win win situation for both of us so that is the idea of insolvent bankruptcy code and also for the starts up who have ideas certain ideas but they don't have money but now they are young enough so if they start a business venture but unfortunately it's not successful then they should be allowed to start their life fresh so that is the idea of ibc code now uh, of course uh, this law has proved very very effective in the sense then around 16000 cases the claim for more than 850000 crores have been settled by the uh, parties borrowers with their bankers so this is the this is the new opportunity and these the laws are in favor of banks thank you this brings us to the end of part 1 and uh, we would then move to part 2 of the video thank, thank you, you thank you